And finally, now we will take a closer look at the methodology, how these results exactly were obtained. How do we know that anger is 150 or that reason is 400? Also, we will show you a technique that will allow you to calibrate anything or anyone to find out which level of consciousness is consistent with any person or product or company or idea or teaching or piece of music, literature, art, food, whatever it is that you wish to calibrate. And the technique that we are going to use is called muscle testing and it comes from a science that's called applied kinesiology. And applied kinesiology is based on a well, observation actually that our muscles, our body, immediately goes weak when we are in contact with life-draining levels of consciousness. So the lower part of our table, it's kind of life-draining. It takes energy from you. And the upper part of our table, of our map of consciousness, we can call it life-affirming, for example. So when you are in contact with life-affirming things, people or circumstances, or ideas, or teaching, or art, your body immediately goes strong. And when you are in contact with life-draining people, products, uh, companies, ideas, teachings and art, your body immediately goes weak. And it is unbelievable. <laughs> it goes into that believing, believe it or not category. But we will show you that it, you, you will test it for yourself. So you come to your own conclusions. OK. But before we start calibrating with our muscles, we need to lay out some ground rules. So 10 commandments for muscle testing. First. You do not do muscle testing if you are at that moment of testing below the threshold of 200. So you need to be in a positive vibration in order for this to work. If you are in anywhere on the lower part of the consciousness map at the time of the measurement, you will get inaccurate results, false results. Maybe sometimes they will fit with what results you should get, but it's unreliable. Okay, so first rule is you need to be upper. You need to be on the upper part on the consciousness scale in the moment of testing. Rule number two. You do not do muscle testing if you are below the line of 200. It is that important. No measurement. They that you take at the moment when you are below the threshold of 200 is accurate. Oh, it is at least unreliable. So, no pessimism, no skepticism and no cynicism. Because all those, yeah, we're sure, right, that's going to work, huh? Does it come from insecurity or from confidence? I mean, it comes from insecurity. It shows that all those pessimistic and skeptic, that's not going to work, and yeah, sure, right? It all comes from insecurity. And that's a very good test to take for yourself to see if you are on the upper part of the scale or not. So no pessimism, no cynicism, no skepticism. Second, no depression too. So if you are feeling in a low energy mode, if you are depressed, if you are exhausted, if you are feeling burnout, for example, then you will probably get a lot of false negatives. So something that should be positive, your body will respond as negative because it's too tired. <laughs> and if you need an energy boost to do muscle testing or anything else, you can do this technique anytime, regardless of the muscle testing, it's great. You just do this. So, clench your fist and you're going to thumb a few times a little bit higher than your heart. So, don't thumb on your heart, but a little bit higher. That's a place where uh, thymus gland is located. So, you smile, you think of someone that you love and then you do <laughs> OK, 
there? Is it working? It will give you an immediate energy boost. And you can do it whenever you need some kind of well, additional confidence, for example. Actually, the best attitude to do muscle testing is that of clinical detachment. You don't really care what the result is going to be. You are curious, definitely you are curious what the result is going to be. But, you know, just like when you're doing a science experiment in your laboratory, you, maybe you hope that results are going to be as you predicted. But actually, it's much better to know for sure that you were wrong than to continue your research under a false premises. So, clinical detachment. You don't care what the result is going to be. That's the po best possible attitude for muscle testing. Rule number three. No eyeglasses, no hats, no jewelry, and especially no quartz wristwatches or smartwatches or whatever it is that you can have as your <laughs> watch. <laughs> so, anything on your head especially if it is a synthetic, will influence the results. Also, glasses, eyeglasses will be influenced, especially if it is a metal frame. But just to be on the safe side, remove all eyeglasses, remove all jewelry, and remove wristwatches or smartwatch or whatever you have here. Rule number four, no music and no distractions in the background. That will also influence the result. Rule number five, positive intentions only. Trying to prove a point negates accuracy. Because why are you trying to prove? Why do you feel the need to prove your point? Does proving your point being right comes from insecurity or from confidence? Okay, <laughs> I'm not even going to answer that. <laughs> okay, so. Positive intentions only. Rule number six. This is not a confrontational technique. Respect other people's willingness to participate and do not try to prove a point. I know that's exactly like rule number five, but there's a good reason for that. It is extremely important. Okay, rule number seven. Only one test at a time. We will see now how the test goes, but do not try to test several things at once. So, you will see how it works, but basically your body goes weak when you think of some person of product that is well, toxic for you, life-draining, and it immediately goes strong when you think of some teaching or idea or people or person or product or company or art that is life-affirming. Don't try to hold several things at once. Focus on one. One test at a time. Okay. Rule number eight. Declarative statements only. Do not form a question. And especially do not create a negation. So you can test concepts that are uh, negative in a meaning. For example, you can test uh, I am optimistic and I am pessimistic at the moment of testing. And of course, it is exactly the opposite. But do not test, I am not optimistic. Because what your subconscious mind will hear is just optimistic. And it will ignore the negation. Okay. So, declarative statements only without any negation in it. Rule number nine. No future. Do not test the future because future, well, you are creating your own future. Your future depends on your choices. You cannot predict what's going to happen because it depends on your choices <laughs> and on your actions and on your vibrations and on your attitude. So, no future. You can test present and you can test past, but no future. Okay. And rule number 10. Remain detached and impersonal. So, you don't care what the result is going to be. Attitude of clinical detachment is actually the best. So, all of those rules are important. But the most important are these three. First, you do not do it unless you are at the moment of testing above the level of 200. Positive intentions only, no confrontation. 
it is not a confrontational technique and it negates accuracy and remain detached and impersonal at all times. Are you ready to do the muscle testing? <laughs> okay, great. Okay, first we will start with something simple that we already know is it true or not. Okay, so you can calibrate yourself in a way. There are several ways to do that, but I will show you the most, the simplest technique and portable technique. You can do it yourself and even you can, you can do it without being noticed. Sometimes that's important too. <laughs> so what are you going to do? You will create a ring out of your thumb and the middle finger. Okay? Then you will put the index finger of your other head inside. And then you will think of something I'll show you. I will give you examples. And then we will try to see what kind of resistance do we get when we try to pull this finger through our ring. So, when our body goes weak, this will be pretty simple. No resistance, because muscles in the finger are weak. When we are confronted with the truth, when we think of something that is consistent of the higher part of the consciousness map, this will go strong and it will be well, more difficult. Of course, not impossible. You can always <laughs> pull it, but it will be more. It is a difference that you can really feel. So, we'll start with something simple that we already know that is true. And for example, your name. That's a good start. So, ring with your dominant hand. So, if you're right handed, do the ring with your right hand. If you're left handed, with your left. But you already did that instinctively, didn't you? Okay, <laughs> that's one way of showing how actually weird this technique is because I've never seen anyone doing ring with his other hand, with his less dominant hand. Okay, then you put the uh, finger, index finger inside from your left hand. And then we will test my name is whatever your name is. Now, first of all, if you are, for example, your name is William, but everyone calls you Bill, please test my name is William, not my name is Bill. Because, you know, no nicknames, uh, no funny names, and because we are testing the truth of the statement. And the truth is, your name is William. Secondly, it would be really best if you translate all those sentences and ideas that we are going to test into your own language. So, of course, if you are a native English speaker, then please test my name is, whatever your name is. But if you are Italian, please test il mio nome è Giovanni or whatever it is. Okay. We are ready now? Okay. First check that you are happy, that you are not depressed. If you are depressed and exhausted and feels like, oh, I don't feel like doing that now, dum, 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 ha, 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 ha. <laughs> you know, I mean, it really works because why Tarzan before jump always does, ah, 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 ah. <laughs> I mean, because it lifts him up, because it gives him confidence and strength and optimism. So, if you are depressed and uh, tired, you do a few thumbs or leave this test for tomorrow. That's also fine. Secondly, you are not attached to the outcome. You don't care if this test is going to work or not. So, maybe the test will show that your name isn't William, although you know it is. And that's fine. That's fine. You don't care. Okay, that's the best possible uh, well, attitude for the test. So, ring, index finger. Just one inhale and a conscious inhale and exhale. Then you put your index finger in. Then you close your eyes. You center yourself. You balance yourself. You check if you are unattached to the outcome. And then just hold in your mind idea, my name is whatever it is. And after a second, just pull. Just try to break this ring with your index finger. Okay? 
it's relatively difficult. I mean, of course, it's possible, <laughs> but it is. It, this ring creates some kind of resistance, doesn't it? Okay. Now, let's test something that we know for certain it is not true. So, for example, like again, finger, finger, okay? Inhale, exhale, center yourself, balance yourself, you are unattached to the outcome, you don't care what the result is going to be. And now, hold in your mind, I was born on Jupiter, pull. Is it easier? It is, isn't it? <laughs> because you were not born on Jupiter. If you were born on Jupiter, then play, please try something else. For example, I was born on Mars. <laughs> okay. But I guess you're not born on Jupiter. <laughs> so, you know, your muscles will go weak because it is uh, your body is your actually your consciousness field is confronted with a false statement. And of course, now you can say, yeah, but I knew already that I was <laughs> not born on Jupiter. And that's fine, because we are going to test some more. But the idea so far was to feel the difference, to feel the difference between truth and false. If you are not certain, please test uh, some other things that you know for true, for certain that are true and you know for certain that are not true. Just to feel how it's going, okay? How about this one? Again, ring, index finger inside. Mm. Inhale, exhale, consciously. Center yourself, detach yourself from any outcome, from any expectations. You don't care what's going to happen. And then think on, of some juicy, beautiful strawberry and pull. Okay. Because strawberry is good for you. You can add as many adjectives as you wish. You get beautiful, organic, uh, without pesticides. <laughs> Just create in your mind however it is the most natural for you. Create in your mind image of that juicy, beautiful fruit. It doesn't have to be strawberry. You can choose apple or whatever, whatever fruit you prefer. And then test it. And it will be true. How about this for a contrast? Again, create a ring, index finger inside, conscious inhale, exhale. Non-attachment, detachment from any particular result that's going to happen. And then think of artificial sweetener and pull. Your bodies go weak when you think of artificial sweetener because it is a poison. It is a terrible, terrible thing. Please do not eat or drink artificial sweeteners because it is really terrible for your body, and your body already knows it. And if you have an inclination, if you like some kind of soft drink uh, that contains artificial free sweetener, uh, and you can, you, you can always recognize them, there are, some, there are zero or diet or something like that, just think of that. Just hold in your mind your favorite soft drink that contains artificial sweeteners and pull. And before that, please make sure that you are not attached to the outcome. Because if you think, oh, please be true, please be true, because I really like that drink, <laughs> then it's not going to work. Why? Well, why do you need that result to be well, positive? Does that come from insecurity or does that come from confidence? I mean, it doesn't come from confidence, it comes from insecurity. Confidence would be, oh, look, that thing is not good for my body. Okay, then I won't use it anymore. I'm confident that I can live without that soft drink. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> you know, that's a positive attitude. Okay. How about testing some of the, well, uh, ideas or concepts that we shared so far during this course? 
For example, inhale, exhale, bring index finger inside, and then we are not attached to the outcome. Okay, check that always. Check that first, and then my consciousness emanates from this body and pull. It is false. Your consciousness does not emanate from body. Your consciousness is not created by your body. Your body is just a receiver. Actually, your body is inside your consciousness field. We'll talk about that later. But your body does not create your consciousness. And you already know that. And because your body will go weak on that statement. How about another? Again, conscious inhale, exhale, balance, center yourself, detached from the outcome, and so on. Matter is energy condensed to low vibration. And that's true. Matter is energy condensed to slow vibration, low vibration, whatever it is that you prefer. And that is true. But now we will go a step forward and we will see where on this consciousness map does that sentence resonate with. So we already know that it is true, that it is life affirming, that it is somewhere about 200. But where exactly? Is it completely true? Is it on the level of enlightenment of 1000? That's the highest possible level that you can have in human domain. So we'll test that. So, how do you do that? Again, same technique. Ring, index finger inside, you center yourself, conscious inhale, exhale, you detach yourself from the outcome, and you say, matter is energy condensed to a slow vibration, is higher than 100. It is. You, it is matter is energy condensed to slow vibration, is higher than 200. It is. It is higher than 300. It is higher than 400. It is. It is higher than 500. No, it is not. <laughs> and you can, you can even make more precise measurement. For example, energy is matter condensed to slow vibration is higher than 450. It is. It is higher than, higher than 480. It is. It is higher than 490. It is, but you know, when you get a result, when you're not really sure, then you're really close. <laughs> it is higher than 500, it is not. So it is somewhere in between 490 and 500. You can go, I mean, this test is not exactly precise to a point. It is, but only if your level of consciousness is really high. But for the most of us, it's I mean, the result somewhere around 490 or 500 is good enough. Why? Because the idea that matter is just a condensed energy, slowed vibration, it comes from reasoning. It doesn't come from love. Love doesn't care about that. You know, being in spirit, you know, it is spirituality starts with 500 and spirituality doesn't care. Uh, your soul doesn't care where our <laughs> matter comes from. <laughs> okay. So it is on the level of reason, of the scientific approach, and it's great, it's a huge achievement to be on that, in that field of 400 and something. But it is not above love. Okay, let's do another. Let's do some of the well, uh, higher teachings that we had here. So again, inhale, exhale, you put your index finger inside your ring, consciously uh, detach yourself from any particular result, okay? and of course translate it in your language that may help you. Okay? And then, love your enemy. Love your enemy goes strong. You can even just hold in your mind forgiveness. Oh, forgiveness is even stronger. I mean, love your enemies about forgiveness, right? And understanding and so on. 
So you can test any idea, any concept, any spiritual teaching, any teaching at all, any scientific teaching. <laughs> and if you wish so, please check and recheck everything that we've talked about so far. No, not about just this table of map of consciousness. You can check and recheck all the quotes and quotations that we discussed so far about Einstein and from Tesla and from Max Planck, anything that you wish. Anything that sounds a little bit fishy to you, you're not sure. You can actually test it, but only if you are above level of 200 and detached from the result because you don't care what the result is going to be because because you don't. <laughs> I mean, it, it's interesting to know, but so what if something doesn't meet your expectations? And your expectations will put you in a level of desire because you want the results to be on, in a certain way, or pride because you already know what the result should be. And if it is not, well, then the test is stupid or something else is wrong and you don't care because you know already. <laughs> I mean, you don't. <laughs> but okay, you can even be angry because the result is not as you expected. Maybe you will even feel ashamed because all of those years you've been telling people <laughs> that energy comes from matter, <laughs> not the other way around. And now you're wrong, you're guilty, and so on and so on. So you need to be above the level and completely detached from the result. Okay, let's test another one. Again, inhale, exhale, ring, finger inside. What is good for you is good for me. It is, it is true. And you can even calibrate this according to levels. You can say what is good for you is good for you. Just hold it in your mind. You don't need to speak it out aloud. What's good for me is good for you is above 200, is above 300, is above 400, is above 500, is above 600, uh, is above 700. Mm, no. Because above 600, well, the concepts of you and me, uh, well, they become well, fuzzy. But we'll talk about that later, don't worry. Okay. And, okay, one more thing, uh, again, ring, and then conscience, inhale and exhale, balance yourself, center yourself, detach yourself from any particular outcome, you don't care, close your eyes and then be the change you wish to see in the world. It is true. Okay. Now let's test some people. Okay, this quote was from, from Gandhi. How about starting with Gandhi? Because he probably, uh, I assume that Gandhi will test positive. And, but let's make a test. I mean, you are not attached to the outcome. You don't care if the result for muscle test for Gandhi is going to be this way or that way. Because, you know, it's just a stupid test. Maybe it doesn't work. <laughs> but you don't care. It's not that I know that it doesn't work. Because that's a skepticism, that's pessimism, that's cynicism. You don't need that. Just, okay, let's see. Let's see what the test is going to say about that. So you put your ring inside. And then close your eyes, balance yourself, center yourself. Hold in mind Gandhi and pull. And this strong. You can be even more precise if you wish and test where exactly Gandhi lies. It's going to be definitely higher than 500 and lower than 1000. <laughs> you know, it's going to be in, some, in that range. And I'm not going to spoil your surprise if you wish to do so. You can also test Buddha. You can also test Jesus. So Lao Tse or whatever, Rumi, whatever person from the past that you are inclined to. Okay. How about this one? This one is interesting. So balance yourself. Conscious inhale, exhale, ring, index finger, and then just detach yourself from any particular outcome. You don't care what the result is going to be and hold in your mind Napoleon and pull. Napoleon.
Napoleon is testing fools. Napoleon, the great conqueror, the great warrior. <laughs> How come? <laughs> I mean, he was one of the well, greatest person in history. Well, would you characterize Napoleon as something that is life-affirming or life-draining? Well, he was a killer. He was life-draining. I, I mean, we can say that Napoleon was a great warrior, but you know what Yoda said about that. Wars not make one great. And that's true. I mean, why do you need to conquer? Does that come from insecurity or from confidence? From insecurity, of course. <laughs> so, being a great warrior is not that great, <laughs> according to a map of consciousness. And, of course, you intuitively know that it is so. Okay. But maybe you somehow anticipated that. Maybe now you're reasoning. Mm, this test, okay, it works. It really works. And I'm a bit puzzled about that. But you know what? Because that's because I subconsciously knew already or I reasoned that Napoleon is not going to be, you know, as high as Gandhi. <laughs> because the map of consciousness, you know, he, he, I mean, he is conquest, his conquering comes from pride and from anger and from desire. Okay? Maybe even from fear that someone else will conquer him instead if he doesn't do that. Okay. But how about testing a person that you probably don't know? So this is a picture of a well historical figure real historical figure that probably you, do, you don't know. If you do know who he is, I mean, that doesn't change the thing. It, the test will reflect the same results. But nevertheless, just take a look. Just don't try to analyze, you know, who is this guy? Uh, what kind of clothing is, she, is he wearing? Uh, what is the time period? Just Look at the man and absorb the energy. Absorb his level of consciousness. Okay. And then close your eyes, hold this image in your mind and pull. Was it true or false? It was false. You don't even knew the guy and you already knew that he is somehow not good. And actually, this was King Leopold II of Belgium. And he was responsible for, well, estimated 10 million deaths. Somewhere at the end of the 19th century, uh, Belgium, or to be more precise, King Leopold, found in a Congo, in Africa, a rubber, I believe it was. And then he tried to force the natives to collect that rubber for him, and they didn't like the idea. So he, well, killed many, 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 many of them, around 10 million. But actually, we don't know for sure, because, <laughs> because you know, they didn't have a census in the Congo at that day. So we don't know. But Somewhere, somewhere between 2 million and 15, and the official estimation is about 10 million. So he's a killer. And your body will respond weak. Now, you don't know who he is, you've never heard about him, but just by looking at him, you absorb the energy, the, his consciousness field and your consciousness field somehow interpenetrate and you know that this person comes into life-draining <laughs> category. Isn't that impressive? Now you can test any uh, person from the past. You can test Julius Caesar if you want. You can test Nelson Mandela. You can test, but the best test is always when you don't actually know the guy. I mean, testing Nelson Mandela, <laughs> you know already that it's going to test true. Of course. But, you know, just you can turn on TV and then find some guy speaking. And then you can even mute the tone. You don't even need to hear what he or she is talking about. 
just absorb the energy from that person for half a minute, 15 seconds, but let's say 30 seconds to be on a safe side and test. And you will be astonished how much negativity is on our television. It is actually not easy to find a person on a television today that will test positive or a television show that will test positive. I mean, it is possible. For example, if you somehow have a DVD of Carl Sagan's Cosmos, that was a documentary created by Carl Sagan, great astrophysicist, somewhere in the 80s, I believe, and he will test positive, he will test strong. But most of the content that's on today's television will test false. And maybe that will motivate you to well, turn off your television. <laughs> that would be a great idea. How about testing your own frequency or your partner's level of consciousness? How about, does that sound like fun? Well, don't. <laughs> no, really, don't do it. Unless you are completely certain that you are not violating first two principles. You need to be above the level of 200 to do the testing. Just take a closer look at your thoughts. What was your first thought when I said, let's test your partner or let's test your own level of consciousness? Maybe it was, wow, what's such a great idea, but then immediately, ah, and what if I turn to be on the level of 100? What if I find out that I have a lot of desire, that I have grief inside, pride? What does that tell about me? Or maybe I'm even not in a good vibration to test myself. Or maybe I'm holding some guilt and shame and that's somehow pulling me down. What does that mean? <laughs> the same goes when you're testing anything that you are naturally attached to the outcome. I mean, I can say, you know, now we are going to test your wife or your husband or your mother or your brother, but don't be attached to the outcome. But it is quite difficult to do so, because of course you are attached to the outcome. I mean, of course. <laughs> so, unless you are 100% certain, and you cannot possibly be, that Maybe later, <laughs> maybe later when we come to some other topics that will help you, but let's talk about that later. Maybe later you will, but right now you cannot be certain what your level of vibration is when you think about testing yourself or your partner. And it is not as good as you assume it would be. So for now, don't do it. If you really need to do it from some reason, find a third person. Find someone that is high on the consciousness map and that is, and he's or she is to totally unattached to this. So he or she doesn't care what your level of consciousness and what are you going to say if they face you with the fact that your level of consciousness is not that great <laughs> or your wife's or your husband and then but even then you know don't take this test too uh, well personally too seriously there is a way to use this muscle testing in a positive way to test your own belief system and we will do that later. We are not going to open that Pandora box right now because we need some introduction to that. <laughs> but, for example, you we can do just one to illustrate the point. And that is, you know, conscious inhale, exhale, detach yourself from all the expectations, make a ring, put your index finger inside, balance yourself, close your eyes, and then hold in your mind the idea Money corrupts. Now, was that positive or negative? It depends on your personal belief system and it comes from your subconscious mind. Maybe your rationing mind, your conscious mind knows that money or power doesn't corrupt in by itself. I mean, it is a tool. 
both money and power are tools and you can use them in whatever way you wish but if you really believe subconsciously that money corrupts there is a high probability that you will avoid any situation in your, vi in your life that could bring you a lot of money because then you will be well corrupted or at least tempted to be and you don't want that you want to be a good person so this is one of the major well belief system roadblocks to success for many people they subconsciously believe that money corrupts or that power corrupts and therefore they are not going to uh, enter into any endeavor that could possibly bring them more power or more money but once you know that you believe subconsciously that power or money corrupts then you can address that issue and say okay i'm holding that belief i don't know where that belief came from maybe i picked up from my parents or from school or from my friends or from some trauma in the childhood nevertheless i will not act like that is true it is all about bringing your subconscious belief system into a conscious mind and then you can deal with it just as carl gustav jung one of the greatest psychiatrist that world ever had and he said one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light but by making darkness conscience and we'll do that just a little bit later to make your own darkness conscience that is the key uh, tool so muscle testing is extremely useful in making your darkness conscience find out what your belief system really is not what you think that it is but what it really is just think of a belief and then test it and but make sure that you are unattached to the outcome so okay now i will test money corrupts and it would be great if I find out that I'm really holding that belief. It would be also great if I find out that I'm not holding that belief. So no matter the outcome, it will be great because I'll deal with it somehow. It's a level of courage. And of course, any of other levels higher than that. From a level of reason, that is very, very interesting examination. Hmm, who knows what else I'm holding in my subconscious mind? what my darkness is, consists of and I didn't even know how exciting now I will learn a little bit more about myself and then I will pull that idea into the, my conscious mind I will deal with it and I will be a better person I will raise my vibration and I will be happier and I will be more successful and more understanding and so on and so on okay so it is a great thing no matter the result that is that is one way of uh, putting yourself in a proper vibration the second way of putting yourself is i don't care i really don't care let's do some testing because it's interesting to do a test because whatever happens it will be great okay you can also test all kinds of concepts that are well they look similar but they are, not, they are really not and we already tested about the difference <laughs> talked sorry talked about difference between problem and the challenge and now let's take a look at that so ring index finger inhale exhale detach yourself from any outcome and then hold in your mind problem and pull weak challenge Ah, challenge test strong. How about this one? Beautiful. Strong. It is strong. Okay, is it? Is it? Yes, it is. Okay. Now test glamorous. Ah, glamorous is weak. Glamorous is not beautiful because glamorous comes from insecurity. Beautiful is just a state of being. 
You can say that all those emotions are beautiful emotions. <laughs> okay? I'm not saying that these are glamorous. <laughs> but glamour, willing, uh, so you want to shine, you want to be noticed, you want to be in the center of your attention. Is that insecurity or is that confidence? It is insecurity. Yes. Test this one. So put your index finger here. And now test attacking the cause. We. Another one. Just stay in your state, in that state for a little bit longer, and then support the solution. That's strong. That's strong. So you know, we already talked about how this is about force and this is about power. And now we know that power is good, power doesn't corrupt. <laughs> or maybe you believe, you can, you, can do, you can test that too, we tested uh, money corrupts, you can test power corrupts. If you believe that power really corrupts, really think about it. I'm not trying to tell you anything, I'm not, I'm not trying to make you see the light, and I'm not trying to influence your decisions. Because you can test it for yourself, you can think about it for yourself, you can make your, your own darkness conscious, and that will make you a little bit more enlightened. Okay. So, please don't let the force be with you, may the power be with you. <laughs> because this is all about power, and real power doesn't need justification. Real power doesn't need to be enforced, and real power doesn't create uh, counter power <laughs> doesn't create a counter force. And real power is uh, silent and uh, it is not obvious. Real power is nature, for example. Now you can go in the woods, in the forest, and everything seems, you know, quiet and peaceful, and maybe a squirrel here and there and bird, but Mm, there's no, not much movement, there's nothing going on, for example. And then you notice that these trees are huge. When did that happen? How did that happen? Have you ever seen a tree? I must pull this branch a little bit higher. No, it happens, you know, it just happens. That's a true power. It doesn't hurt anyone, and it creates, it creates beautiful structures, great things, just by beingness, just by being, and at the same time, it is in peace. So the greatest power requires the lightest touch, and it doesn't hurt anyone because it because it doesn't have to. Okay, so in your workbooks that you have received and. For those of you who are looking this on a video, you can download it from down below this video. Uh, I, I think that you just need to register your email address or something like that. And then you can download the workbook. And inside you have a little bit more of these concepts and uh, ideas and uh, beliefs that you can test for yourself. Just keep in mind three important truths. I mean, all those uh, ten commandments are important. They are laid out here. But the most important is you don't do it unless you are in a good vibration, positive vibration, life affirming. You must have positive intentions. This is not a confrontational technique. And remain detached and impersonal you don't care what the result is going to be. Okay? And now we will go to something completely different that will also blow your mind. Because all this is sweet and now we know for certain that what we really want in our life is to get as high as possible. <laughs> but how? How will I raise my level of consciousness? 